So, now the quest is can we take this joint distribution and represent it more compactly ok. That is what I know I need all these values it is just that I am interested in representing these get having all these values if I want I should be able to immediately get them, but I do not need to really store 2 raise to n minus 1 parameters right ok. So, now let us consider the case of two random variables which is intelligence and SAT scores ok. Oh, you have read the textbook ok. Uh, assume that both are binary and they can take on values high and low. Now, here is one way of specifying the joint distribution you have specified these four values and I am not going to say 2 raise to n minus 1 from now I will just say 2 raise to n. So, 2 raise to n is 4 in this case and of course, there are many such joint distributions possible. What do I mean by this you will read this in textbooks what do you mean by this there are many such joint distributions possible oh, yes, two variables right I mean how many what do you mean by many joint distribution what is a joint distribution all these values right. So, there are many such values possible it right? just need to ensure that it sums to 1 and everything is greater than 0. So, when you say there is a family of distributions which can satisfy all this it just means that there are many possible assignments which can actually give you this joint distribution right. How many parameters does it have three parameters right because if I know three parameters the last one is just summation is 1 I know. So, the last one just has to be such that the sum tends to be 1. So, this distribution has uh, three parameters. Now, I am interested in reducing this 3 because in general this is going to be 2 raise to n minus 1. So, I want to get something which is less than 2 raise to n minus 1 ok. Of course, from this small example I am not going to be able to do much because 3 is anyways manageable right how much do I need to really reduce it right. But we will start with this small example and see even if we add one more variable how things change drastically. Now, in this case notice that there is a natural ordering between these two random variables. So, the random variables are intelligence and SAT score. So, you could think that intelligence is what the SAT score depends on right. I mean you could think that SAT score if I were to ask you a relation between them you would say that SAT score probably depends on intelligence right. And if I assume that way if I have to write the chain rule there are two possibilities right P of s into P of i given s or the one which I have already written. So, of these two possibilities you would probably choose the first one is that correct right because saying that what is the probability of SAT score given that he is intelligent or he or she is intelligent makes more natural sense it is not that you cannot ask the other question. I could ask you the other question also right what is the probability of someone being intelligent given that their SAT score is high or low that question also makes sense right and we are going to see that question later on. But I am just saying that it is more natural to think of it in the former way where you have the intelligence and then the SAT score given the intelligence ok. So, now from one conditional distribution one joint distribution I have split it into two distributions ok and instead of four specifying four entries now how many entries I am specifying six entries. So, I have done something very smart right I had a problem with four I said six is a better number let us do six is that right wrong. So, actually by factorizing and factorizing is something good typically by factorizing I have actually increased the number of entries which means I have increased the number of parameters is that true no yes no maybe probably has the number of parameters increased no why summation 1 right. So, for the first row I actually have only one parameter once I know that probability of heads or intelligence being low or high the other one is deterministic because I know that the sum has to be 1. So, how many parameters do this factorized distribution have 3 which is the same as the number of parameters I had in the original distribution. So, I did all this roundabout thing and I ended with the same number of parameters, but what have I what have I achieved in the process I have given you a more natural way of representing this distribution. And now this idea we will try to build upon this and see what happens when we have more random variables right. So, we still have the same number of parameters, but we have seen this idea that if I could represent the joint distribution as a factor of some conditionals and marginals then probably one I have a more natural way of representing the distribution right. So, this is what we have achieved we have a more natural way and this is known as conditional parameterization right. So, instead of specifying the joint distribution the parameters of the model are now conditional distributions right I need to specify these conditional distributions and I am done. So, I do not need to give you that one table I need to give you two tables that fine ok. Now, consider the third random variable which is we did not have grade so far ok great. Now, what will happen? So, first let us notice that none of these three random variables are independent of each other is that a valid statement 
for grade and intelligence it is valid I mean you would I mean again roughly assume that grade depends on intelligence modulo copying and other various other things. But what about SAT score it also depends on intelligence, but SAT score and grade your SAT score and your grade in a not so important deep learning course why would they be related are they independent of each other yes no is the SAT score independent of the grade let us stay on first page of chapter 4 from the textbook and not go to the second page. No, so, let us look at it this way right if I told you that the SAT score was high which of these two probabilities would be would you expect to be higher the grade to be high or the grade to be low why is this happening because the SAT score tells you about the intelligence which in turn tells you about the grade ok. So, on its own all these three variables if I look at any two pairs any pair of variables from these three variables they do not seem to be independent of each other is that fine ok fine. Now, however, it is possible that the distribution satisfies a conditional independence what is the conditional independence that it satisfies something is independent of something given something I am giving the most natural possibility can I say that the grade is independent of the SAT score given intelligence yes no maybe yes why what does it mean actually why do I say that grade is independent of the SAT score given in intelligence what am I trying to say actually. P of g given does it make sense right. So, if you are given that it is intel the person is intelligent knowing his or her SAT score is not going to give you any more information right you could determine the grade based on SAT score is that always right. I want you to link it back to what I have been saying from day one right that whatever modeling choice you make in the previous part of the course all our modeling choices were y is equal to f of x they always depend on our assumptions about how things work ok. Now, here also you are doing certain assumption and I can give you an example where this assumption fails actually be this may not be a correct assumption actually. So, I am asking you whether the grade is always independent of the SAT score given the intelligence. So, think of a simple case right the person is intelligent, but perhaps he is he or she is too lazy to write an exam in time right and he just reads oh I know this I do not know to write the answer what is the point of writing all this right? like all. So, he or she may not actually be very good in time management right. So, the exam has to be finished in 3 hours, but now that you know that person has done well on SAT score you know that the person has actually done well on time bound exams that means the person is good at writing exams he can do time management also. So, if you think of that particular view then you could say that s is not independent of g given i because s tells you something about time bound exams intelligence tells you general about how that person can what is the capability of the person intellectual capability of the person, but together these two actually tell you whether the person can do well in a course where there are a lot of time bound exams right does that make sense right. So, again what is the assumption that I am making so I could make any of these assumptions this is my modeling choice if I believe that for whatever reasons if I am a domain expert or maybe I have looked at some data or whatever I could make one of these choices I could either tell you that the SAT score is independent of the grade given the intelligence this is what my modeling assumption is going to be or my modeling assumption is going to be that it is not independent right. But this decision is something that you take just as you take the decision of what is the f that you need to choose right whether you want to use a complex neural network or a, a, or a SVM or a logistic regression or whatever right? that is the same thing. So, all these cases whenever you make these assumptions you are making whenever you are making these choices you are making some assumptions and right? it is up to you. So, in this for this running example we are going to assume that the SAT score is independent of the grade given the intelligence right for this discussion we are going to stick to this argument this is my modeling choice I may be wrong that means whatever model I make it is going to be giving me it is going to give me bad probabilities as compared to what the true probabilities are going to be, but this is what my modeling choice is in the absence of any other information this is what I am going to assume is that fine ok. Now, let us see the implication of this assumption does it simplify things in any way for us. Now, how many parameters do we need to specify 
I, G, N, S. Remember that grade can take three values. Hey, you had a question or you were just raising your hands? You, second row first. Okay. Uh, how many values can, uh, how many parameters do you need for this? Why 2 into 3, 2 into 2 into 3? Grade as three values, right? So intelligence and SAT score as high and low and grade as three values. So 2 into 2 into 3 minus 1. So you need 11 parameters for this, okay? Now, what if you use conditional parameterization for this? What would happen? So what is the thing that you will start with? Chain rule, okay? We will start with the chain rule. So we know that this joint distribution factorizes into this conditional and marginal. What about the first conditional joint distribution? What kind of a distribution is this? Conditional joint distribution, right? Okay. How does it factorize further? Does it? Yeah, that's what the chain rule does, right? You keep factorizing, so you will write it as this. Anything that you can simplify here? In this form, how many parameters do you need? How many parameters do you need for this term? 1 for this term, 2 or 3 or 4, there are 2 variables. So how many do you need in the conditional form? I was counting everything as 2. How many do you need in the conditional form? 11. So nothing has simplified. What will simplify now? First term what happens? Because of the independence assumption, now how many parameters do you need? 1, 4 and 2. What is the total number of parameters now? 7. So right. So you see that because of two things, one is we are using a factorized form, second is the factorized form gets simplified because of dash conditional independences, right? Because of these two things combined, now you need one table for this which has only one parameter, you need another table for this which has two parameters because the sum of the rows is going to be one, oh sorry, and then you need another table for this guy where this, there are going to be three parameters, right? Is that fine? Everyone gets this, right? Forget about the tables, but at least from the equation it should be clear, right? That you need fewer parameters. Now imagine this situation scaled to a much larger scale where you have n vari variables and you have many more conditional independences in your graph, right? So every place where you had a variable of the form or a term in the chain rule of the form probability of xi given 1 to i minus 1, that means given all the other variables, this set which has i minus 1 values, a lot of terms from there is going to get dropped out because the variable xi is actually independent of these variables given the remaining variables, right? So you see that writing the chain rule gives you a factorized form. The factorized form simplifies further because of these conditional independences and then you get much fewer parameters than you originally had, right? So that is what the importance of conditional independences is. And in whatever problem you are trying to model, you have to make these conditional independences, right? No one is going to give you these conditional independences. Now suppose if I go back to our original argument that we had already seen that i was not independent of g or s and we also made an argument where g and s were also dependent. In this case, how many parameters would you need? If I had not assumed the conditional independence of grade and s given i, how many parameters will I need? because this term is no longer going to get simplified, right? So you can write the chain rule, you will get the factorized form, but the factorized form is not going to simplify unless you have certain conditional independences in the factorization. Does that make sense? Okay. So now with this, what do you have? The alternate parameterization. So you had this one representation for the joint distribution which is this one monolithic table, a large table. Now instead of that, you are giving me multiple tables. So that's a more natural way of representing the distribution. Why do I say it's a more natural way? Because whatever you put in a conditional is actually a natural ordering, right? You know that SAT score depends on intelligence. You know that grade depends on intelligence and perhaps not the other way around, right? So that's why it's more natural. It's also more, what was our quest for? What kind of a representation were we interested in? Compact. So this is also more compact, right? And this is also more modular. Why do I say this is more modular? When does modularity help while writing code or anything? Or if you want to add, what if I add one more random variable to this setup? Would I have to change any of these three tables? Yeah. You just have to introduce new tables which depend on that random variable or that random variable depends on something else, right? For in particular P of I you don't need to change, you can just reuse it as it is. P of S given I you don't need to change. In fact, when you introduce the random variable G, I just use the first two tables from my previous example where G was not there. Right? So that's why modularity is also important, okay?